As an example of analyzing an op-amp circuit, let's take a look at this circuit right here that comes from Rizzoni in the 8th chapter homework, problem number 19. What we have here, we're asked to show that the output voltage is the result or consists of the summation of V1 plus V2. And of course, it'll be scaled by values associated with R1, R2, R sub F, and R sub S. When we look at this, we note that, first of all, that the op amp is drawn upside down from the way we're typically used to seeing it. Generally speaking, we've got the inverting it terminal up above uh, on the top and the non-inverting down below. So let's first of all look at this. The fact that the output is fed back through a feed re feedback resistor to the inverting terminal tells us that we've got negative feedback involved in this circuit. So we're going to make the assumption that with that feedback resistor, the amplifier is operating in its linear region and the virtual or the um, ideal op amp approximation is applied, which means that we're going to assume that the current going into the inverting and non-inverting terminals will be zero, and we're going to also assume a virtual short between the two input terminals. In other words, we're going to assume that V sub N is equal to V sub P. Connected to the non-inverting terminal, we have two sources, V1 and V2, connected through the resistors R1 and R2, respectively. Now, we'll get to the point where we can do this analysis um, as it's drawn, but while we're starting out, it may help us to, instead of trying to turn our brains upside down, let's go ahead and redraw the circuit with the amplifier um, drawn so that the inverting terminal is up and the inverting terminal node is up also. And in this form, it looks a little bit more like what we're seeing. Doesn't matter. Functionally, it's all the same. Hopefully, it'll just be a little bit easier to, to follow what's going on. So we're going to analyze this circuit by writing a node equation at the inverting terminal. Let's start out just doing it in terms of V sub n, and then point out that V sub n equals V sub p. But before we do that, we're going to have to determine what V sub p is. So writing a node equation at the inverting terminal in terms of V sub n, we've got V sub n over R sub s. That's the current leaving this node going this way. Plus the current leaving the inverting node going toward the output will be V sub n minus V out over R sub f. The current going into the inverting terminal we're going to assume is 0, so the sum of those two things has to equal 0. Solving for V out, we get then that V out is equal to V sub n times R sub f over R sub s plus 1. And we recognize that gain term there as just the gain term for the non-inverting amplifier configuration. But at this point, it's still in terms of V sub n. We don't have it in terms of the voltages associated or connected to the inverting terminal. Or down here in our more rec easily recognized circuit, um, we don't have V sub p in terms of V1 and V2 that are connected to the non-inverting terminal. So let's go ahead and write an, a node equation now to determine V sub p here in terms of V1, V2, R1, and R2. Summing the currents leaving this node, we have then the current going this direction will be V sub p minus V1 divided by R1, plus the current leaving this node going down through V2 will be V sub p minus V2 over R2. Again, the current going into the terminal is 0, so the sum of those two terms has to equal 0. Since we're solving for V sub p, let's combine like terms. Let's get all the V sub p terms. We have then V sub p times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 on one side, and then we've got negative V1 over R1 and negative V2 over R2. Let's take those to the other side of the equation as positive V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2. Now recognizing that we have R1 and R2 as denominator terms in both sides of this equation, let's just multiply both sides of the equation by R1, R2 to clean that up. And when we do that, we get then that V sub P times. Now, this term here by R1, R2, the R1's cancel, and we're left with R2. Plus, similarly here, when we multiply this term 
by the R1 times R2, the R2's cancel, and we get R1 there, is equal to, now on this side, we get, multiplying this times this, the R1's cancel, we get V1 R2 plus V2 times R1. Now, solving this for V sub P by dividing both sides by R2 plus R1, or R1 plus R2, we get then that V sub P is equal to V1 times R2 plus V2 times R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So R1 plus R2 are common denominators. It's the common denominator to both of those terms. So we can write this then as this is equal to V1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 plus V2 times R1 over R1 plus R2. And we pause just for a moment to look at what's happening. We recognize this term right here as the voltage divided portion of V1 showing up across R2. And this term over here is the voltage divided portion of V2 showing across R1. And V sub P then is equal to that. And it's this V sub P that we're going to say V sub N is equal to, that virtual short. So we're going to take this and substitute again the V sub N equals V sub P. So coming back to this expression, we'll substitute this in for V sub N, and we get then that V out is equal to this thing right there, which is V1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 plus V2 times R1 over R1 plus R2. Okay, that's the V sub N term times R sub F over R sub S plus 1. Now this takes a little bit of an insight to look at what's going on, but here's our non-inverting gain term, and we have weighted versions of V1 and V2 being added together. So it is in fact some V1 plus V2 times the non-inverting gain. Now if we wanted to get just this to be V1 plus V2 times the non-inverting gain, or times some constant, we could start out by saying, well, what happens if we let R1 equal R2? Let's let R1 equal R2. With that being the case, then, V out is equal to one-half of V1. And again, R1 equaling R2 gives us another one-half multiplying V2. So it's one-half of V1 plus V2 times R sub F over R sub S plus 1. We have then the sum V1 plus V2 times R sub F over R sub S plus 1 times 1 half. And we can get V out to be exactly equal to V1 plus V2 if we let R sub F equal R sub S. If we let R sub F equal R sub S, then we have R sub F over R sub S. That's the same thing. That's 1 plus 1 is 2 times the one-half gives us one, and we get then that V out equals V1 plus V2. Or this circuit that we started out with would in fact deliver V1 plus V2 with the added advantage that the voltages are on the non-inverting terminal rather than connected to the inverting terminal.